Howdy. Why? You know, I'm all for creativity. Inventing new things is a wonderful part of humanity. But sometimes food ideas just branch out in very odd oh. directions. Pizza is an obvious favorite for many people. But whether it be Pizza Hut, Domino's, or a smaller pizza company, we've gotten some vacuously stupid oh. pizza ideas over the years. I'm sure somehow someone out there thought fruit oh. pizza or Cadbury cream egg pizzas were good ideas. But I'll truly never understand their way of thinking. And that's okay. Regardless, today I'd like to show you these pinheaded pizzas, how society responded to them, and how truly disastrous they actually tasted. So let's check out the 10 pizza failures. And if you do like one of these pizzas, or perhaps you crafted one of these pizzas yourself, please don't take my riffing to heart. It's just my silly personal opinion, and I'm only criticizing these pizzas, and certainly not you as a person. With that said, let's begin. For number 10 we have the Oreo Pizza from Domino's. What the hell is this? Have you ever, ever actually considered putting Oreos on a pizza? No. Well in 2007, Domino's did, and the pizza was a massive failure on the market. And you gotta question when you look at this thing, did they actually look at what they'd made before slapping it up on a promotional sign? What about this thing actually looks appetizing? It looks like a bunch of pigeons just had a large meal of bread and decided to park their rears on the pizza base. Yeah, it looks like a pigeon took a dump on it. I think when Domino's had the idea, they pictured something different to what they got. On paper, the idea of Oreos and vanilla sauce served hot on a pizza well, it doesn't sound tasty to me, but it certainly sounds like a sweet pizza. But the reality was an ugly, overly sweet mess of pigeon statuard that is an insult to pizza. And dessert for that matter. I mean, just looking at this Oreo pizza with vanilla sauce, is this like 110% sugar? But for those with an extra sweet tooth, I think one of the issues of Oreo pizza was complete lack of any Oreo cream. I mean, without that Oreo cream, is it even Oreos anymore? Instead, we got vanilla sauce slathered over the top of the tasteless wafer-thin biscuit base, then topped in another vanilla sauce. But I am curious, let's take a closer look at the actual taste. 15 years ago, Hatchback Media did a taste test of the Oreo pizza. His friend commented that it looked terrible, and upon tasting it, Hatchback agreed. It's kinda nasty. Other taste testers such as James tried it, and he commented, This is terrible! This is very, very bad. It has a cardboard crust and a plastic marshmallow filling. On Reddit, even a Domino's employee commented, It was a pain in the butt to make, and it tasted like butt. That being said, we have seen that dessert pizza can work, such as with Dairy Queen's Triaza pizzas. But Domino's is more known for its savory line, so it probably wasn't brilliant of Domino's to make the exact opposite of that and expect it to be a big hit. Overall, I think the Oreo pizza was an interesting idea, but just a disaster in reality. And for the night's stupidest pizza, we have Kellogg's Ego Real Fruit Pizza. Oh boy, real fruit on my pizza? And purple cheese? Threw up in my mouth a little bit. That sounds like a ludicrously horrifying idea. Let's check it out. So Kellogg's may have some tasty cereals, but apparently one time those cereals granola and berries fell onto a pizza base and they said, brilliant, let's mass produce this. Thus they made the first cereal pizza. Surely, surely no one was asking for a granola pizza. So how did this ridiculous nightmare taste? Well, a taste tester called Freezer Burns gave it a review, and he described it like this. Extremely disgusting and extremely confusing. This fails in every sense of the word. One half out of a five star rating. Confusing seems right. In fact, he couldn't even identify what it was he was eating. I have no idea what this is. It's meant to be microwave, but who wants hot raspberries on a pizza? He said he would have preferred it cold, but I think Kellogg's intent was to serve it hot. Mr. Breakfast tried it too, and both reviewers had the same complaint. The cooked product isn't nearly as pretty as the one on the box. I know that's a common complaint, but this food in particular is shockingly ugly in reality. I'm trying to think of a PG way to describe what it looks like, but it's just not coming to me. This thing looks like someone's face after a B-rated slasher horror movie. Except it's apparently a full cooked pizza. 
Not too surprisingly, Kellogg's has since discontinued this pizza. Perhaps because it was a silly idea? But clearly I'm wrong because I learned there are actually people alive who miss this thing. Such as NJ Taperchick. I wish they still made this. This was my absolute favourite. I hate breakfast now. Sad face. Captain Cereal had an astute observation about this pizza. They stated, The topping looks like throw up. Why yes, yes it does. Let's move on to less vomity pastures. And coming in at number eight, the Baked Beans Pizza by Heinz. What? Over 20 years ago, Heinz was dabbling in some interesting ideas. You see, one day, a truly brilliant chef got a pizza base, a can of beans, and he dumped the beans on top. Yes, that's a brilliant idea. Thus was born the baked beans pizza. So what exactly is it? Why, it's exactly what it sounds like. A pizza base laced with tomato sauce, cheese, and a liberal topping of beans. That's gross. And in 90s Britain, apparently it was a big hit. Truly the greatest proof that British people do not have taste buds. Hey. Oh, sorry, hon, you're British too, aren't you? Well, you can make fun of Canadians like me next. Yay! But obviously, the beans pizza wasn't too big a hit, because baked bean pizzas have disappeared from shelves. And from what I can find anyway, no pizza company has been stupid enough to try baked beans pizza in the last 30 years since. But nostalgia's a hell of a drug, and apparently some people in Britain have missed this pizza, somehow. One Reddit reviewer said, Anybody else remember eating this gourmet creation back in the 90s? This would be a treat on a Saturday evening while watching Gladiators. Yay! Baked beans on pizza is a gourmet creation, apparently. The post generated a lot of comments. One commenter said, I talk about these pizzas all the time. Everybody always gives me that beans on a pizza face of disgust. I miss these pizzas so much. Another commenter said, I still put beans on my pizza. And of course, for better or for worse, everything gets resurrected nowadays. So Heinz announced after a 20, 30 year hiatus, they would bring this eyesore back to shelves. Heinz head of growth, Sophie Higgins said, we are so excited to relaunch our beans pizza. It is truly iconic. Well, iconic is one word for it. We also launch products like the beans burgers, beans bowls, and beans filled hash browns. Beans burgers and beans hash browns. Sure, it's 2023, why not? And coming in at number seven, the candy brownie pizza. While I've tried to keep most choices here constrained to the larger pizza chains, most pizza chains have had the common sense to keep away from this one. Pizza Hut, for example, has constrained their dessert pizzas to a small cookie pizza or a lava cake. But then I found Chocolate Overload, an entire full-size pizza dedicated to death by chocolate. You see, there's a surprising amount of videos about this chocolate brownie pizza. And the entire thing just goes against every savoury element of a pizza. It basically transforms your stomach into pure chocolate. At least the Oreo pizza could still kind of be classified a pizza. But the candy brownie pizza is this weird combination of pizza, candy, brownie that I just can't quite figure out. But whatever it is, how do taste testers rate it? Well, Celie Carla made a brownie pizza on her channel and presented it beautifully, but she didn't actually try it. Becca Brownies made it too, and again, it's presented beautifully. But again, none of these lovely ladies are actually tasting the thing. I mean, I get that this thing's probably like a zip cord to the waist, but I feel like you gotta at least try something this weird. Fortunately, the website Taste of Home did have commenters willing to try it. See why Ounce said, I made this for my son's birthday party and it was a big hit. It was a nice change of pace from the usual birthday cake. And that's what I imagine this kind of pizza is generally for. Probably too sweet for most adults, but a novelty change from a cake for kids. But still, probably a very sweet change that is a hard sell to most adult taste buds. That being said, the internet has seen more basic chocolate pizzas that are a little less overload and work a little bit better as a pizza. They often use things like chocolate sauce and chocolate chips instead. Gosney, for example, did his chocolate pizza with ice cream on top. He felt it tasted amazing, though I definitely think his recipe was more suited to adult taste buds and not quite as overkill as the candy brownie pizza. 
Pizza Hut doesn't tend to put chocolate on their pizza. They tend to just present chocolate desserts that are shaped like pizzas, such as the chocolate chip cookie dough pizza. Peep This Out tried it out and he described it as very decadent. I wouldn't say ultimate, but it's very, very good. Very decadent in flavor. It was basically like a gooey chocolate chip cookie in a pizza shape. I'm curious though, if you've ever tried a chocolate pizza yourself, feel free to let me know in the comments what you thought of it. Number six. The Big Mac Pizza by Food Beast. Ah oh dear, this pizza exists, and the company Food Beast are responsible for this disturbing bodily catastrophe. It's like the pizza that ate Denver. Yeah. The Big Mac Pizza, in all its glorious madness, starts with a pizza dough base slathered with Big Mac sauce, then top it with Big Mac patties, cheese slices, more special sauce than onions. Okay, so are we done then? No, then put another pizza base on top of all that. Then top that with more Mac sauce and cheese, chop more beef patties on top, and then top off that pizza with plenty of fries, more mac sauce, and sesame seeds, before finally baking it. Oh, so now we're done. No, no, we're still not finished yet. Because when this bad boy comes out of the oven, they add lettuce, and of course, a fifth slathering of mac sauce. Because apparently, four drenchings of mac sauce just wasn't enough. Now surely, surely I'm not being a health freak by thinking this pizza is a little overkill? Oh no, according to the internet, I'm not alone in thinking this. Null said, The ghost of my gallbladder is crying just looking at this pizza. I feel ill just seeing it. I hear you, man. Using not just one, but ten Big Mac patties, plus enough Big Mac sauce to sink a ship. The whole thing is just deeply troubling to see. But anyway, how did this thing actually taste? Well, on Syracuse.com, Sal's Pizzeria made a similar recipe. The only difference is they just add pickles, they ground the beef, and use considerably less sauce. Apparently, it started as a joke pizza, but it became so incredibly popular with their customers that they actually started selling it. Now, this previously joke pizza is their most popular pizza. Of course it is. As for the taste itself, their thoughts were, It tastes like a Big Mac, but it's a little messy. If I had a blindfold, I'd swear I was eating a Big Mac. I mean, they didn't seem blown away by the taste, but I suspect if you like the taste of Big Mac, you'd probably like the taste of a Big Mac pizza. There's just a lot more of it, and it's a lot smellier. With five freaking coats of Big Mac sauce, you could probably turn this thing into a stink bomb and clear a stadium. And coming in at number five, the four and 20 meat pie pizza. Here in Australia, mate, we love meat pies. We don't tend to have sweet pies, but savory ones. So we generally fill our pies with gravy and meat. You'll find them in every service station you go to here. It's also the lunch of many of our tradesmen. Probably the most famous meat pies here are the four and 20 pies. So the Aussie branch of Pizza Hut turned the literal crust into meat pies. So we now have a meat pie stuffed crust pizza of meat and gravy. It seemed preposterous to the rest of the world, but it's important to note, here in Australia, we thought it was preposterous too. You know, mate, we just consider Pizza Hut to do weird crap like that. But nowadays, preposterous novelty pizzas like this have mostly been discontinued. But how did this meat pie pizza taste? Well, Lifehacker's staff bravely gave this gravy pizza disaster a taste. And some of them did enjoy the combo, but most of them felt like this fusion was kind of pointless. Anthony tasted it and he said, It's basically just like having a pizza with a bonus party pie at the end. Not terrible, but do I need it? Well, our colons probably don't need it. And for the fourth stupidest pizza, the Sicilian lasagna pizza. Okay, what even is this thing? Is it a pizza or is it a lasagna? The Sicilian lasagna was a pizza that tasted like lasagna. I'm sorry, now that I say that out loud, I have no idea why I put that in the script. It seems really obvious. No, Josh, the lasagna pizza tasted like chocolate. My stupid writing aside, this lasagna had three types of cheeses. Mozzarella, Parmesan, and ricotta. And the ricotta was the key to this lasagna flavor. Combine it with beef on top and it tasted just like lasagna. It was a truly baffling food combination that left people questioning, who is this for? An army of Garfields? Well, back in 2006, when this was put on the menu at Pizza Hut, there was no shortage of Italian restaurants making real lasagna, and pizza for that matter. So maybe there simply wasn't a high enough demand for lasagna pizzas. The other problem is, when we look at the taste, reviewers seemed underwhelmed. An anonymous review on ReviewStream said, 
From the first bite, I thought, man, something about this is weird. It was the use of ricotta cheese, which to me, man, just doesn't belong on a pizza. The other problem is it was missing that structure of layered pasta that is uniquely lasagna. Sadly, lasagna pizza ended up a mediocre version of both worlds. Sometimes when we morph two foods together, like say peanut butter and chocolate, we get a winner. Unfortunately, in this attempt, we got a flop. But you know, good on Pizza Hut for trying new ideas. And coming in at number three, Crown Crust Carnival Pizza by Pizza Hut. In the words of the Director of Middle Eastern Studies in Arizona, this is not a pizza. It's a fast food Frankenstein monster of marketing trends. An evil combination that should never have crawled out of the dark laboratory from whence it came. Personally, when I think burgers, I first tend to think of America. But surprisingly, this crown crust burger pizza came from the Middle East and it was never offered to America. Yet it really does feel like one of those over-the-top American novelty foods. As the name might give away, the crust is in the shape of a royal crown, but the gems in that crust crown are tiny little cheeseburgers. Like a real burger, it was topped with cheese, lettuce, tomato, onions, and of course special sauce. It was marketed as a royal pizza of decadence. In reality, food critics called it a culinary abomination. Or even more flatteringly, in this article it was called a sign of the apocalypse. But perhaps you're as curious as I am about how this culinary abomination apocalypse tasted. Well, let's find out. Unfortunately, the crown crust was discontinued over a decade ago, and it was only available in the Middle East. Fortunately, YouTube's been around much longer than that, and is a weird place. So 10 years ago, College Humor sent their taste tester 6,000 miles to Dubai specifically to try this stupid pizza. I mean, at least he's going with purpose. There's definitely worse reasons to travel across the world. He was offered the crown crust in three options. Cheeseburger, chicken filet, or cream cheese. Oh, oh he's a brave man. He ordered the cheeseburger crust, and uh, it's definitely not as attractive as it was in the commercial. Honestly, it looks more like a splatter of a pizza with lettuce, tomato, and mayo on top. But maybe it tasted good anyway. What's the verdict, John? <laughs> hmm, turns out the special sauce is South Island dressing, and the crust tastes a lot like a burger sausage patty. Although he said it tasted okay, he also described it as one of the worst pizzas out there. But it was still good purely because it was pizza, and it's pretty hard to screw up pizza. He also mentioned he was absolutely covered in grease, so probably not the most nutritious choice of lunch either. But that's pretty obvious just looking at the thing. Number two, peanut butter and jelly pizza. Who, who asked for this? I just can't imagine the mind that took a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and then tried slathering it on a pizza. That's the evilest thing I can imagine! Surely it would take a truly masterful chef to take this culinary calamity and turn it into anything but an ugly mess. Fortunately, our planet does have some exceptional cooks out there, such as mythical kitchen chef Josh. This is one of the biggest culinary risks of my career, and I once boiled my boss's pee into a marshmallow. Interestingly though, in the end, the taste tester quite liked it. His taste tester was reminded of the taste of Thai food, such as Thai chicken satay with peanut sauce. And I'm a big fan of that Thai dish too. So maybe the combination of meat, tomato, peanut butter, and jelly on a pizza isn't that bad. Apparently, Josh was inspired to make this pizza by the West African dish Marfe, a tasty stew that also uses peanut butter, tomato, and meats. This strange combination is also sometimes made by mums in the kitchen. They take a pizza base, top it with peanut butter, then fruit spread, then finally add strawberries and blueberries to the top. And I gotta admit, that does sound like a healthier option to your regular pizza, particularly your cheesy ones. It's good for health nuts like me, but is it even a pizza anymore? It does sound like a fun alternative to a sandwich in a lunchbox, so who knows? And of course, Goofy's Kitchen has been cooking PB&J for quite some time. And looking at TripAdvisor, they've somehow made it look tasty. According to this Disney food blog, Kim's nine-year-old gave it her seal of approval. So at least some of the kids like it. But what do some of the adults think? Well, luckily, we have a couple of reviews of PB&J Pizza from food.com. Running Girl said, This is a simple yet fun twist on a boring PB&J. I fixed it for my kids for lunch. They were a little leery at first, but it ended up being a big hit. This will be a keeper. Huh, that's a nice surprise. 
Andrea said, Oh my goodness, this is so good. I had this at Goofy's Kitchen in Disneyland. I am a huge peanut butter fan and this is just amazing. So in the hands of a master chef like Goofy, I think this pizza's okay. In less experienced hands, I think peanut butter and jelly would taste just as revolting as it sounds. For example, the rushed, inexperienced kitchen hands of a Domino's pizza. But I admit, this choice is a weasel call. That's on me. It may be odd to me, but a lot of the taste testers' kids liked it. So if you proceed with a peanut butter and jelly pizza, just proceed with caution. And before we get to number one, just two very quick honorable mentions. The Domino's Dominator Pizza. For only $99. I I'm sorry, how much? $99. Oh boy, a pizza for only $99? What incredible value. How do they do it? Uh oh, sorry, right, yeah. So apparently this pizza is actually in Spain. Either the economy in Spain is very rough, or their dollars calculated different to the US dollar. Possibly both. The Dominator pizza is a slightly bigger than usual pizza that didn't fit in the oven very well, or the box. And it was apparently too much pizza for some customers to handle. So due to these issues, they didn't sell it for very long. Not much else to say on it. The Banana Curry Pizza. I left this one off the list because it sounds gross to me, but maybe banana and curry are a normal thing on pizzas in Sweden. Ugh. So I assumed it was a cultural difference I may never understand, and that's okay. And with those two said, on to number one. And the number one stupidest pizza is... The Cadbury Cream Egg Pizza. Why? Why did I put such a stupid pizza on this list? In fact, this pizza is so harebrained, I could not find a single person monumentally stupid enough to try it on YouTube. And I have discovered there are a lot of crazy taste testers on YouTube. No one was crazy enough to try it. Until now. But first, a little backstory. Cadbury produces more than half a billion cream eggs per year. And people like putting these cream eggs everywhere. Apparently people deep fry them, sandwich them into burgers, rub them in their hair and paint it on their toes. Okay, maybe not, but chocoholics definitely mix this thing into everything they eat. Including, of course, the cream egg pizza, aka the Fior Egg Tina. The what? So, who is responsible for this? Apparently, the pizza company Crust Brothers. While traditionally, the Fiorentino is topped with tomato cheese, spinach and egg. The Fior Egg Tino says, screw that. Let's smother our pizza with strawberries, mascarpone cheese, mint, and cream eggs. Oh, I I'm gonna make this. Damn right I'm gonna make this, because we have to know how this tastes. The London Pizza Company made the sensible decision of only having this one available during April. Let's get to cooking. Maybe <sighs> should have stuck with SpongeBob. It doesn't even spread well. Can't I just have the strawberries? Okay, now the horrible mascarpone cheese. Oh, oh my god, 30 grams is such a good Why would you put mint on there? Who, who in their right mind puts mint on a freaking pizza? Oh, jeebus, why? Doesn't that just look lovely? Just stick it on top? Yeah. What a mess. Oh god, this is so unhealthy. Ta-da! And so I reluctantly dumped them on a pizza, stuck it in the oven, and questioned the maddening terror my life has become. One hour later. Here's my taste test. You can see I've got a slice here, I've got a bit of Cadbury cream egg there, and the mascarpone cheese there, and uh, the strawberry uh, base there. Uh, let's give it a try. And then I tasted it. And, well, this was not the smartest move I've ever made. Oh god, why? I think I felt slightly more comfortable that time I bit into and swallowed a Carolina Reaper. Oh. 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 Oh, the mint and the way it comes together with the, the chocolate to take with the strawberry. The only part I think kind of mixed okay is the strawberry with the Cadbury cream eggs in their sweetness. But why put mint on top and mascarpone cheese? Oh. Oh, the texture is wrong. It, it's bad. D don't ever make that. I gave Nin a slice too, and she had this to say. It tastes like crap. The Cadbury Cream Egg Pizza is a pizza so stupid, no one except me on YouTube has been stupid enough to try it. And now I understand why. I don't recommend this pizza. And with that, thank you for joining me to explore these pizzas. If you think I missed a particularly weird or lousy pizza, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. 
And as always, thanks for watching, and hopefully I might see you next time. Today's member question is from Phoenix Healing. They ask, if you could be any animal, what would you be? Honestly, since most animals in nature live starving to death, desperately fighting for their lives, I'd probably say I'd like to be a house pet, like a well-loved cat or parrot. Probably a parrot, as then I could fly if my owner let me. And some parrots can live close to a century, so that's nice too. Thanks for the question.